Mighty Morphin Power Rangers was born in the East and adapted to the West. A child of two distinct storytelling perspectives, its identity equally rooted in each culture. No one will ever know what Power Rangers would have been if it was a uniquely Western creation, but one show gave us a brief glimpse into what it could have been. Hi, I'm Dan Larson, and this is the history of Mystic Knights of Tirnanog. I eat fruity cereal all the time, not just for breakfast, but as a snack between meals, after meals, anytime. With Magic Spoon Fruity Cereal, it's still delicious, but it's way healthier. Magic Spoon tastes exactly like regular cereal from your childhood, but is super nutritious. It comes in a variety of flavors, cocoa, frosted, peanut butter, cinnamon, blueberry. They even drop limited edition flavors all the time. If you're trying to cut down on carbs or sugar, trying to eat healthier, the cereal you ate when you were 10 might not be the best fit. Magic Spoon has zero grams of sugar, 14 grams of protein, and only four net grams of carbs in each serving, also only 140 calories. It's keto-friendly, gluten-free, grain-free, soy-free, low-carb, and GMO-free. Click the link below to get some Magic Spoon cereal today. You can build your very own variety box and use my code TOYGALAXY for $5 off. You can choose from the best-selling cocoa, fruity, frosted, and peanut butter flavors, plus other awesome flavors including blueberry and cinnamon. Newsflash, Magic Spoon is now shipping to Canada. Magic Spoon is so confident in their product, it's backed with a 100% happiness guarantee, so if you don't like it for any reason, they'll refund your money, no questions asked. Click the link below and use the code TOYGALAXY for $5 off, or go to magicspoon.com slash toygalaxy to save $5 today. Thanks again to Magic Spoon. Please note right up front here that I am not Irish. I watched some YouTube videos, but I do not have a lot of experience pronouncing Irish names. The names of places and characters are spelled differently depending on the source, and the show itself is inconsistent with pronunciation from actor to actor. I'm not going to try to do an Irish accent, I'm going to try to do my best. Mystic Knights of Tirnanog is a 50-episode live-action television series that originally aired in the United States from 1998 to 1999 on Fox Kids. It's live-action but has a lot of computer-generated monsters and environments that, even at the time, stretched the suspension of disbelief. Ten years of war born from a grievance between families rages on between the land of Kells, ruled by King Conaher, and the forces of Temra, ruled by Queen Maeve. But things are changing. Queen Maeve has come to Kells under the premise of a peace treaty signing that seems too good to be true. And it was. The whole thing was a distraction for Maeve to launch a sneak attack and seize Kells, reclaiming what she says is her birthright. But the plan was discovered just in time. Maeve and her assistant, General Torque, formerly of Kells, escape using Maeve's dark sorcery, proving to King Conaher and his master of the mystic arts, the druid Carherd, that they are going to need some help in order to defeat Queen Maeve. Especially because Queen Maeve isn't satisfied with the current contract she has with the dark fairy lord Miter. She asks Miter for even more power, to which he agrees, for a price to be named later. He gives her a new runestone set atop her already spooky-looking Havoc staff that, at the very least, gives her the ability to create monsters whom she can deploy at will against the minions of Kells, to tear down their walls and crush their spirits, to tip over their wooden rail fences and frighten their goats to the ends of the earth. King Conaher needs a miracle to save the day. He decides he's going to surrender to Queen Maeve rather than send his soldiers to death in battle. Unless anyone has any other suggestions. Anyone. Anyone? Carherd can, like, see the future a bit sometimes. He can conjure brief illusions, but he's got nothing on Queen Maeve's dark powers. He does, however, have a card up his sleeve and relates the story of Tirnanog to King Conaher. Tirna Nog, a mythical place where dwell the little people, or fairy folk. Magical creatures whose ancient scroll foretold of a mighty warrior called Draganta who would bring peace to the realm for a hundred lifetimes. A scroll that also shows the mark the Chosen One would bear. That Chosen One turns out to be Rowan, an orphan that Carherd found as a child and raised as his apprentice. Despite Carherd's and King Conaher's protestations, despite the fact that Carherd doesn't even have the entire scroll and therefore cannot even be sure that the scroll isn't a key to unlocking ultimate evil, Rowan insists that it is his destiny and begins the quest for the mythical warrior Draganta. Rowan is joined by his friend the thief Angus, King Conaher's daughter, Princess Deirdre, and Ivar, a prince from the land of... 
Well, he's not from around here. Together they find the secret entrance to Tirnanog and meet the leader of the fairy folk, King Finvera, ruler of Tirnanog, a powerful conduit of fairy magic as well. After proving their worthiness, King Finvera blesses the four young heroes with new magical weapons based on the four elements of matter. For Rowan, the Sword of Kells, able to shoot blasts of fire. For Deirdre, the Whirlwind Crossbow, able to shoot hurricane force blasts of air. For Angus, the Terra Sling Mace, able to shoot massive boulders or quake the earth. For Prince Ivar, the Barbed Trident, able to shoot blasts of electricity, even though he's the water guy. They are powerful weapons and do help turn the tide for the moment, but they aren't enough to win the battle. The four heroes take on individual quests, challenging evil guardians to be rewarded with their magical Mystic Knights armors. Mystic Knights of Tirnanog was created by Savan Entertainment in response to a television market flush with live action superheroes, especially shows for kids, and Savan himself was responsible for a lot of it. In 1993, the floodgates opened when Saban produced Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, a show that adapted a Japanese series called Kyoryu Sentai Ju Ranger. Fight scenes and the general plots were retained, while the rest of the episodes were rescripted and reshot with American actors and narratives. After the success of Power Rangers, Saban looked for other shows to adapt in the same way, and other studios did as well. 1994 would see Superhuman Samurai Cyber Squad produced by Deke Productions adapted from the Japanese series Denko Chojin Gridman. The market expanded with shows geared toward older audiences that were original creations, more expensive to produce, but not dependent on the existence of shows from Japan. Hercules The Legendary Journeys and its spin-off Xena Warrior Princess proved that there was more there than multicolored spandex ninjas with giant robots. And how about those computer-generated visual effects? How about them? In 1997, Saban produced a second season of Masked Rider, the fifth season of Power Rangers, and the second movie, Turbo, a Power Rangers movie. They also expanded their portfolio with a live-action Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle series called The Next Mutation, their first without reusing imported footage and plots from Japan. Saban was eyeing that audience that Hercules and Xena were bringing in, and that production team was interested in Saban's core audience, Dem Kids. Young Hercules was in development, slated to battle the Power Rangers. Saban wanted to get his own original historical property out there, but was coming up short. Robert Hughes had worked with Saban as a writer, producer, and director on Power Rangers, Masked Rider, VR Troopers, and Big Bad Beetleborgs. He pitched a concept that would appeal to the same audience, but was tied into the fantasy, magic, and adventure of Celtic mythology. Until the Fox Kids storm in the castle sweepstakes. Win, and we'll turn you into an action figure from the new Fox Kids series, Mystic Knights of Terminology. We'll also send you and your family to Ireland for a behind-the-scenes look. Plus, give you tons of Mystic Knights toys. One thousand of us win a Mystic Knights action figure and ticket to Discovery Zone. To enter, watch Fox Kids for your Celtic clues. Write down three clues with your name and address, and get it to us by September 18th. To Fox Kids storming the castle, deal by... Box 4030, Beverly Hills, 90213. or Land of Youth, is the name for the other world. Or rather, it's one of the names for the other world that the other world goes by. Or one of the other worlds that are part of the other world. Status, it's complicated. You may seek out the other world and never find it. Then again, you might get a direct invitation from a beautiful maiden bearing an apple. Or a silver branch, or a ball of thread. But, and I can't stress this now. If you go, do not stay for very long. Time moves faster there. This guy I knew, Oshin, met this girl, Niev, who took him to Tirnanog. He loved it. Lost track of time, thought he was only there for three years, came back, it had actually been 300 years, got off his horse, boom, died. Dropped dead of suddenly being 300 years older. For this production, Tirnanog is the name of the magical realm where all of the powers could be drawn from. Dark fairy wizards, fire swords, dragons, and whatever else the plot needed. No further explanation for the look or functionality of any weapons, armor, or creatures that came from it. Mystic Knights of Tirnanog was shot in Ireland and Germany, two markets where it fared better than the US where it originally ran. In fact, in Germany, it aired with a different opening theme song that some say is better than the original, but you'll have to judge that for yourself. Shooting a show based on Irish mythology in Ireland, shooting a show based on Irish mythology in Ireland resulted in a cast full of Irish performers. Lachlan O'Meara played Rowan the Mystic Knight of Fire, Lisa Dwan as Deirdre the Mystic Knight of Air, Justin Pierre was Prince Ivar the Mystic Knight of Water, Vincent Walsh was Angus the Mystic Knight of Earth. 
Mystic Knights is not free from a dual personality. While it is a unique creation with its own Western-inspired mythology, it too is subject to the demands of the toy manufacturers. In Japan, the main thrust of live-action special effects-driven programming, or tokusatsu, is to sell the associated merch, many times at the expense of story and character development. Saban Entertainment found themselves having to push back against some of Bandai's requests. Ornate magical armor and fire-blasting swords were one thing. That's the cost of producing a show in this market for this audience. But producer Robert Hughes says Bandai wanted to include motorcycles. While Saban was able to avoid including motorcycles, other toy-related items were inevitable. Multiple scales of figures were released with a variety of play features, smaller 5.5-inch figures with more articulation than Star Wars figures, and an assortment of characters that included the four core Mystic Knights and several of the villains. Larger 8-inch figures that have even more articulation, more accessories, and removable helmets. Unfortunately, Deirdre didn't get a figure, nor did any of the villains, just the three male Mystic Knights. Astute observers will notice that there are some inconsistencies with the action figures when compared to the actual series. One particularly egregious inconsistency. Bad enough that Deirdre, the only female knight, gets excluded from the 8-inch wave of figures, but at least her skin tone is correct, unlike Prince Ivar. As happens with toy lines, even today, figures have to go into production before all of the show elements are finalized. For Mystic Knights, the expectation was that all of the knights were white. That changed with Justin Pierre's casting. But at that point, it was either too late or no one cared. All of the Prince Ivar figures are technically errors, and technically, no figures exist of the real Prince Ivar, Knight of Water. Bandai supplemented the line with more figures with battle action functionality, vehicles, dragons, roleplay accessories like Dragon's Wrath Battle Gauntlet and the Dragon's Breath Dagger. There was also a micro playset for the Castle of Kells. If you missed Mystic Knights of Tirnanog, you don't have many options to catch up. One VHS was released in the US and UK. Germany got two DVDs with two episodes each, but those are in German. It's not currently streaming on any services, but several episodes are available for now on YouTube. Mystic Knights didn't quite reach mainstream pop culture icon status like its cousins, the Power Rangers, while it did have a McDonald's Happy Meal promotion with a surprisingly deep character assortment, including the only figures produced for main characters like Queen Maeve, Miter, and General Torque, it didn't have much support otherwise. That said, a second season was headed for production. It was going to be called Mystic Knights Battle Thunder. There are logos and some story elements that can be gleaned from pictures of the second wave of toys that were never produced. The first assortment of toys didn't perform the way Power Rangers toys had. That's a high bar, sure, but that's the game. The show was struggling with its purpose. It had actually developed its characters over time, fleshed out its world, but where the production wanted to go didn't match with where the budget needed it to go. Mystic Knights needed to either lean into the silliness of things like the Battle Wagon, a mechanical battle tank that betrayed the tone of the performances clearly intended to sell toys, or drop that stuff and just be a show about magic, swords, and sorcery that looks like it was shot at a very nice Renaissance fair. I mean that as a compliment. A Sword in the Stone counterpart to Hercules and Xena instead of Power Rangers. It is possible that shooting in Ireland was not as profitable for the production as they had hoped. Ireland has a tax incentive intended to encourage productions to shoot there as a much more affordable alternative to other common locations around the world. But it's all about money one way or another, and ultimately Saban decided to prioritize shows that had more momentum and more marketing potential. Power Rangers Lost Galaxy, the seventh season of Power Rangers, and the English adaptation of Digimon being the primary beneficiaries. There is no reboot of Mystic Knights of Tirnanog in the works. The rights to the production aren't completely clear. Saban Entertainment was purchased by Disney in 2001. In 2010, Saban purchased the Power Rangers franchise back from Disney, which he then sold in its entirety to Hasbro in 2018. Hard to say for sure if the rights to Mystic Knights of Tirnanog were included in that. Our research suggests that the trademark owned by Saban was abandoned in 2000, so it's possible that you can take your fan film to market without the threat of legal action from Disney, Hasbro, or Saban. Please consult your attorney first. I'm just a guy on the internet. Mystic Knights of Tirnanog was, at first glance, another Power Rangers clone attempting to cash in on a market that was white-hot for live-action superheroes and demanding more of the same. But beneath the surface, it was a sincere attempt to flip the script on expectations and open up a whole new world, a whole new mythology full of stories that had never been told. It had a look and feel, a tone that set it on the level of the most successful shows in the same demographic market, with financial advantages behind the scenes that gave it a fighting chance. In the end, it was not the decision to be different from Power Rangers that heard it, it was the decision to be too much like it, instead of following the magic they found in their own production, in their own world. <laughs> That's why I won't do two shows a night. 
Thanks for watching. Please hit like, hit subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. Thank you very much to those of you who already are. If you haven't heard, we started streaming on Twitch. Find us at twitch.tv slash toygalaxy. If you're in the position to help the channel grow, please visit our Patreon or become a YouTube channel member. Please share this video and let us know in the comments down below if Mystic Knights of Tirnanog was your after school indulgence. I'll admit that this one snuck past me during that time where I was too old for the kids stuff that was for kids at the time, but not old enough yet to realize that everything I was interested in was kids stuff to the outside observer. Why would I draw such an arbitrary line? This, this was the bridge too far. What a weirdo. <laughs> <laughs>